Hey everyone, it's Sean here, your guide to Warcraft, and today we're going to be doing another Raiding with Leashes achievement. This time, it's Raiding with Leashes 6, the Pets of Pandaria, and we're going to start in Moshugan Vaults. If you didn't play Mop, or you missed Mop, or you haven't done these raids before, that's where Moshugan Vaults are, the very first one. So you just want to go in there, kill the first boss, and the first boss has a chance to drop Stone Claw. So... What I ended up doing is I ran this on a load of alts, so each boss kill I get in the video is going to drop the pet. Got this achievement in one night, luckily, and I can just go through and show you what each of the pets look like. Apart from Hattie's getting in the way, he's trying to steal the spotlight a bit here. And so this is the first one, this is Stoneclaw. The next one is the second boss in the raid. This drops from Garajal, the Spirit Bender, one of the Zandalari trolls. We'd throw back to the Zandalari before they actually, you know, got their new models, so they're just... They're regular trolls and it's weird obviously we've just got the allied race so it's actually kind of fitting in a way but this one has a chance to drop the wayward spirit it's one of these spear like the tiki masks i think they're called next up we have elegon you all know elegon you've probably all farmed elegon for the damn mount and you're going to open the chest and hopefully you'll find another item which well sadly is not the mount but it is the celestial gift this has a chance to drop and that will award you the comet pet i believe it's the same model as stone claw it's just one of the celestial pet versions instead so the celestial pets always look pretty cool so stone claw he has a he has a thumbs up from me he's not the you know not the best looking one but you know nice to have another one and then you want to head to the last boss this is the Jangzi and Quingzi, I'm probably, I, I butcher names, it's kind of what I do on my channel. They are here, they have a chance to drop the Mogu statue, which drops a pet called Baozi. I, I just need to, st I just need to not even try anymore. But this is definitely one of the cooler pets that we've seen in a long time. So this is just a Mogu, but a small Mogu. And we didn't actually get any of these as a battle pet in Mop, so it's quite interesting to see that. So I'm very happy to have that battle pet. Next up, we're going to the Terrace of Endless Springs. It's a bit, a bit of a weird location on the map if you've not been there before, but you should be able to find it. We're going to be attacking the second boss, Tuslong, the Cloud Serpent. Once you damage him down, loot the chest, and he has a chance to drop you the Asia Windseeker, or the Azure Windseeker. I never know that word. And uh, it's basically just another... Cloud Serpent Hatchling, it's just obviously with the colour scheme of the boss, not when he's in his Shah form, I think this is just in the original colour scheme, although to be fair I think he looked gold, I don't know, I honestly don't know anymore. And then the boss after that is Lei Shi, the water elemental that likes to hide in the waters, drops the Spirit of the Spring. Now the Spirit of the Spring is kind of the opposite of her actually, it's basically like a fire spirit, and she's obviously a water spirit, so... Yeah, I think it looks a little, I think we've had a similar model, we have like the Pandaren Elementals, but I think this one looks a little different, obviously we've already got the Pandaren Water Spirit with that model, so I guess they did have to change it up. Then the last raid, we have the Heart of Fear in the Dread Wastes of Pandaria. this raid is a little bigger, but you want to head to the first boss, and the first boss, which is Imperial Vizier Zorlok, has a chance to drop the Corfix Swarmling, so... It's actually similar to the Mogu battle pet that we had, but this one literally just is a little mantid, which makes more sense because they're, I guess, they're more insects than people. But if you look here, you just get a little, little floating mantid as your battle pet. I think that one's pretty neat. I quite like that one. We haven't really had one before. After that, you want to head to the second boss. This is Blade Lord Tayak, who has a chance to drop you the tiny amber wings, which gives you the amber glow stinger pet. Now this one. You know, it's pretty pretty standard of a pet, but, you know, still, new pet, doesn't look too bad. You know, no, no new models or anything like that, but it, does, it looks pretty neat. I like the colour scheme of this pet, it's not that bad. And then we want to head outside to the third boss, and this is Garalon. Maybe a bit familiar. He has a chance to drop you, well, guess what, the spawn of Garalon. It's just a smaller version of the boss, really. The colour scheme of the pet actually is like a little bit different than the boss itself like just by like a tiny shade i'm not I'm not sure if that was just me but it just looked a little bit different to the boss i'm not i'm not sure i would i would assume they would have just taken the boss model and shrunk it down but the color just looked a little bit di maybe that was just me maybe i'm just going mad <laughs> then you want to head to amber shaper unzok the penultimate boss 
This one was always an annoying one to solo, it wasn't really possible for a while, but doing it on 10 normal, and especially now we're in BFA, easy, you just take him down. He runs to the middle and he starts doing his channeling thing, but if you just be patient with him, eventually he will die, and once he stops his cast, he'll turn around and then he will just, uh, he'll just drop. So he has a chance to drop you the Amber Goo Puddle, which gives you the Living Amber Pet. The Living Amber Pet is probably the worst of all the pets so far. It's pretty standard. Obviously, that was the last pet I actually needed, but we will get back to the uh, the achievement in a second. But in terms of the Living Amber Pet, it's just a blob, really, uh, and it's nothing new. We've had plenty of blobs. I think it would have been cooler if it dropped maybe one of the amber creatures in some form. That would have been a bit better. And then lastly, you want to head to Grand Empress Shekzir, who has a chance to drop the Essence of Pride. This gives you the Ravenous Prideling pet, which is pretty cool. I think the only Shah pets drop from Siege of Orgrimmar. The boss uh, Shah of Pride drops two different Shahs depending on the difficulty. So we have another Shah pet. I always think the Shah were... Like, one of those weirder enemies, but one that, like, I think looked really good. So, I like the Shah. I think the Shah are pretty cool. So, it's nice to see another Shah pet coming in, especially from, you know, a Shah fiend, the boss in the Heart of Fear. And, of course, if you're lucky enough to get all those pets to drop for you, I think you can alternatively buy them, just saying. But, once you've done that, you are awarded happiness. Just a Shah of happiness, I guess. He's, he's quite cute. Interesting little model there. But I hope it helped. That is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. All of my links are down below. Be sure to subscribe for some more guides and videos. And I'll see you next time.